Second party. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. This House has heard much about HS2 this week, so I can reassure the Minister my intent is not to repeat what has already been said. Instead, I want to focus on HS2's community engagement, or I'm sorry to say, the lack of meaningful engagement. And I deliver this debate based on my interactions and reflections dealing with HS2 over the last three years. Madam Deputy Speaker, the Minister will be aware that my constituency of Meriden reflects every aspect of the HS2 debate. On the one hand, it has the interchange station and the related Arden Cross development, making my constituency one of the best connected parts of the country and the world. It is forecast to create tens of thousands of jobs and thousands of homes. And yet, on the other hand, HS2 Limited is ripping up my villages in my constituency, like Balsall Common and Hampton and Arden, blighting areas of outstanding natural beauty and damaging the Greenbelt. And these villages are more than just their beautiful environments. They are proud, close-knit communities who care about their surroundings and care about the legacy that will be left for future generations. And I am privileged to represent each and every one of my constituents that live there. It is these communities that I am standing up for today, and it is these communities that I believe HS2 Limited willfully ignores and, in many cases, treats with contempt. And just to be clear, I am sure if you ask HS2 Limited, have you engaged with the local community, they will list a lot of things that they have done. But the community, the people that we serve, will tell you. They come to you, they speak at you. They tell you they have listened and that they will act, and then they continue as they were. And communities are left bewildered, and we are left to go through the cycle over and over again. And I want to highlight three examples of the interactions that I believe exemplify why HS2 Limited are not living up to their responsibilities and are failing to be good neighbours in their own words of their own policy. The first is of the haulage route, which is going through my village of Borsal Common. This was meant to be a temporary route through Borsal Common to help facilitate materials movement. Since 2016, long before I was even elected, the residents of Borsal Common had been providing manageable, achievable alternatives, which would have mitigated all the disruption and allowed the project to go forward on time. It was the first major HS2-related issue that was brought to me when I was elected, and despite numerous interactions, HS2 Limited remained adamant that their way was the only way. Constituents complained to me that briefings would happen, action points would be taken away, only for HS2 to return and present the same PowerPoint time after time, and nothing would change. And I was also on the receiving end of this. I received the same briefings, the same PowerPoint uh, presentations, and nothing changed time after time. HS2 finally got their planning application through for the haulage route. But the Minister will be aware that the haulage route is not yet up and running. HS2 Limited haven't been able to access the land as the preparatory works aren't yet completed. And I don't just mean the physical preparatory works. I also mean all the other things that need to happen, like getting the licences, the consents, and working with Solihull Metropolitan Borough Council to put the resources in place to make the project go forward. And as a result, the project is being delayed and the costs are rising. What was their solution? To pursue the application for an, for an alternative route, through Waste Lane and Kelsey Lane, both small village lanes. And don't let the name of Waste Lane fool you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Waste Lane is a beautiful lane, and it's, uh, and it's being used, and the HS2 want to use it to enable hundreds and hundreds of lorry movements day in, day out. Both of these lanes, Waste Lane and Kelsey Lane, are narrow residential lanes. They're used by children to get to school, and it is causing immense anxiety for my constituents knowing that there will be hundreds and hundreds of lorries going through day in, day out on those lanes if HS2 get, the, get their way. And you may ask, how did we get here? Well, it was always obvious to my constituents from 2016 that HS2 Limited's plan was always to wind down the clock until only their options were left viable. And, Madam Deputy Speaker, what a shame they couldn't just work with everybody. What a shame they couldn't find alternative ways forward that could have, made, that could have moved the project forward. And the Minister will no doubt be aware that I'm fighting any solution that results hundreds of, uh, in hundreds of lorries going up and down Waste Lane and Kelsey Lane. Because why should my constituents pay for HS2's, HS2 Limited's arrogance and complacency and incompetence? Madam Deputy Speaker, the second example I wanted to use was that of residents who have been blighted by HS2. My constituent, Ian Smith, in Berkswell Village, has a property that is surrounded by a HS2 works compound and a small portion of this property was identified for access requirements and he was entitled to compensation. He didn't want to move out and it was not compulsorily purchased. So there he is, a literal neighbour to one of the compounds for HS2, 
I visited it. He is completely surrounded. And what did that get him? HS2 making his life miserable in his own home. And I've lost count of the amount of times I've had to fight for Ian, all because HS2 decided to be slow and obstructive. With continued damage to his property, to his gates, dust, daily noise, and work outside agreed hours, it is clear that HS2 Limited have no intention of upholding their responsibilities to Ian of being a good neighbour. In fact, he's had to fight claim after claim regarding damage on his property, with payments that are constantly delayed. He now suffers flood damage, and a ruling from the Independent Construction, uh, Independent Construction Commissioner stipulated that the contractor was responsible for that damage, and, he, uh, and Ian then submitted three quotations to make good the damage. That's a reasonable way to do things. Many public sector bodies request three quotations. But all he has been offered is an amount that doesn't even cover the cost of replacing the carpet, which has been ruined, let alone all the other damage internally and externally. When I spoke to Ian, he said he's sitting in a house where one room is unusable because the carpet is saturated, it smells and is damp, and plaster work is falling off the walls. He never used to have these damp issues. They only started two years ago in January 2021. Now he's fearful when it rains that it will start pouring into the house and he will have to pump out the water. It was also rec recommended that HS2 should provide proper drainage, but nothing has materialised. And to make matters worse, HS2 have now referred the case to the small claims court, which is not the correct process in such situations. It's as if, it's as if they've tried to figure out ways to make Ian's life more difficult. I also want to highlight the case of Stephen Fletcher. He owns Ram Hall Farm. It's a farm that's been in his family for six generations, for over 140 years, and it produces the famous, world-known Berkswell cheese. In fact, I'd invite the minister, if he's ever in town or in the village, to visit uh, Berkswell to see what HS2 are up to, go and see Ram Hall Farm and sample the cheese itself. I've been to the farm, I've sampled the cheese, and I've also seen what HS2 are up to right next door. Mr Fletcher is a sole tenant of the land, but has also has a freehold farmhouse which he jointly owns with his wife, a farmhouse that has now dropped in value because it, is, because it is blighted by HS2. And despite commitments given that people along the route would be at the heart of HS2's property compensation schemes, this is not the reality. Fairness, as encapsulated in the overarching principles of the Compensation Code, require my constituent to be compensated by HS2, but all they do is frustrate the claim at every turn, denying what he is owed and denying what he has deserved. Once again, HS2 does not care about being a good neighbour. So my ask, asks here are very simple. I'd ask the Minister to follow in the footsteps of his predecessor, the Right Honourable Friend for Pendle, who demanded that HS2 act as good neighbours and frankly review the way that they deal with blighted properties and blighted land. Ultimately, I want fast, common sense res resolutions for my affected constituents, including Stephen Fletcher and Ian Smith. The third issue is that of the Borsal Common Viaduct, and I fear, subsequently, the Hampton and Arden Viaduct, because today HS2 have released the images of the, H uh, the Hampton and Arden Viaduct, and I have to say it's uh, uglier than the Borsal Common Viaduct, but I'm going to reassure the Minister and say that that's going to be for another debate another day. The Borsal Common Viaduct I can only describe as a big concrete monstrosity in the middle of our countryside. And I note the Minister kindly wrote to me on the 10th of March in response to my letter of 16th of January, where I raised my concerns about the Borsal Common Viaduct. And the Minister said in his letter he's keen to ensure that the process for engaging local communities is working well. Well, I can assure him, assure him it is not. If you ask HS2 Limited, they will tell you that they have engaged with constituents. Because the Minister wrote to me about their briefings, which they've done, and also the You Said We Did engagement event. But these engagements were nothing more than a tick box exercise. I attended the You Said We Did event. In reality, it was a You Said and We Did Nothing event. There were no alternatives put forward, no options which allayed the concerns of my constituents. This is despite the HS2 Limited telling the Transport Select Committee that they would be offering alternative options. And instead of alternatives, all we have is a proposed big white concrete elephant. In fact, speaking to local councillors, representatives of HS2 Limited told them that engagement did not mean consultation. In other words, they did not have to listen, they would just explain. So does the Minister agree with that? Are HS2 correct that their engagement should be one of explaining and not consulting? The fact is, Madam Deputy Speaker, my constituents are being very reasonable. They've already sacrificed so much. And all they're asking is that HS2 work with them rather than against them. 
to ensure that the viaduct can fit with the local area, character, and ultimately look beautiful. And it can be done. We just have to look at another one of HS2's viaducts, the Colne Valley Viaduct, to see that viaducts can actually be aesthetically beautiful. Even the one in Birmingham, the so-called Bellingham Viaduct, which is named after Jude Bellingham, has more character than what my constituents are being punished with. And from the engagement event that I attended, there were two things that stood out. And I have a copy of the slides that I'm happy to share with the Minister. Because one of the concerns that was raised with me was about graffiti. And it's understandable that my constituents would be concerned that a concrete block viaduct would be a red rag to vandals. So what was HS2's answer to this? They spoke of their zero tolerance policy to graffiti. And they referenced the graffiti policy implemented on High Speed One. Except, Madam Deputy Speaker, High Speed One said themselves in 2021 that graffiti remains a significant issue. To appease my constituents, HS2 Limited decided that rather than addressing the substantive concerns, they would introduce a weaving pattern in tribute to a flax plant that apparently grows in the village of Berkswell. I've yet to find a constituent that finds these squiggly lines of the concrete appeasing, but I must say this, if this had been an episode of The Apprentice, then the person who designed that uh, design would soon find themselves on the way home in the back of a taxi. If HS2 Limited wanted to look at historical or meaningful references, then I would suggest that they should be looking at the deep and rich history of the inventors and architectural heavyweights that have built this nation. Rare is the nod to Sir Christopher Wren or Brunel or even to the modern day Sir Norman Foster. This very building, this beautiful palace that we stand in, was designed by Augusta, Augustus Pugin himself. And instead of trying to recreate their work, they're trying to, uh, they're trying to give the people of Walsall Common a recreation of Spaghetti Junction. Instead of giving them some piece of artwork that we can remember and be proud of, they gave my constituents flax. So on this issue, my ask is simple. The minister will know it isn't too late to fix this. I've already objected to the planning application already. But HS2 can withdraw this, and they can come up with better pl plans. Because if they lose the planning application, all it will result in is further delays. So let's fix this before it gets to that. We need to demand that HS2 Limited comes back with better plans. They will move on from my village and they will, from my community, and they will be, my communities will be left with decades of ugly concrete blocks if we don't do anything. Let's challenge and push HS2 to do better. It is not too late. We can and we should demand better. And when I was elected, I committed to holding HS2 Limited's feet to the fire. And I ask that the Minister stand with me so we can find viable, sustainable and acceptable solutions. Before I conclude, I'd like to pay tribute to the local parish councils and residents associations who have done an immense job. And I feel lucky to have such a conscious and proactive parish council and group of parish councils in my constituency. Berkswell Parish Council, Borsal Common Parish Council, Hampton and Arden Parish Council and the Hampton and Arden Society have all played their part. And I thank the ward councillors who have been working very hard to get HS2 Limited to listen. And I have a lot of time for the Minister, Madam Deputy Speaker. He's already engaged with me on this issue, and I know he's an excellent chair of the Transport Select Committee. Well, he was. But the Minister should know that I will keep coming back on these issues. I will keep requesting debates, and I will keep demanding answers. My constitu constituents deserve to be heard. Sir so William Kirsch. Deputy Speaker, and also to my old friend for giving me this opportunity for a short, a short speech. I, I too have a similar problem as my honourable friend, friend, the member for Meriden. Uh, I have a dossier which, of course, I've made, made already passed on to the minister, and he's very kindly agreed that he will come up to my constituency. We've had 10 years of misery with HS2's miscommunications as we struggle to get, navigate a clear path towards dealing with HS2. We have farmers with plans who have had their, car, their farms cut in, part, in half, severing access to land and property, notices served as late as possible, ill consideration for damage and jeopardy, loss of crops, late payment of grade fees, significant cash flow problems, financial ruin, land left in a deplorable state, the threat, and I quote, of requiring every area of land and, quote, no assurance that any right of access will be granted in a substantive form and in deployment of unnecessary and intimidating security on farms that have been family homes for generations. In another instance, no offer of a price for a property nine months after the valuer himself had, had been along to have a look at it. The bottom line is this is completely and totally unacceptable. Uh, the truth is, uh, Madam Deputy Speaker, that HS2 need to be given a real rocket. And I look forward very much to the Minister doing just that 
because if he doesn't do it and these people are continue to live in the misery to which they've been subjected over all these years, I think it will be a complete disgrace. It is a disgrace already. It can be rectified. Look forward to the Minister coming up to my constituency, North and South, so that we're able to have a proper discussion. He can see for himself the manner in which HS2 have let my constituency down. Uh, Minister Hugh Merriman. Um, thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. Can I first of all thank my honourable friend, the member for Meriden, for securing uh, this debate and also for the contributions of uh, my right honourable friend, the member uh, for Stone. Um, Madam Deputy Speaker, I grew up in a part of the country where both HS2 and East West Rail are under construction. Indeed, I shall be uh, in, that, uh, in that town this weekend again. I therefore fully recognise the change and upheaval that HS2 can bring to communities, both to um, my honourable friend and right honourable friend, but also communities uh, across uh, the represented across this House uh, that they pass through. As construction approaches its peak, so too is the level of disruption, and I appreciate that road closures, lorry movements and noise are now a lived reality for many people. I do want to see HS2 Limited leaving a positive legacy for communities but communities should be appropriately consulted, responded to efficiently and objectively, involved in plans and informed about the works affecting them. And when things go wrong, which happens from time to time, efforts should be made to learn from mistakes and to come back with better solutions. And with regards uh, to the casework uh, mentioned by my honourable friend of Mr Stephen Fletcher and Mr Ian Smith, uh, I will write back to my honourable friend and I will make sure that is investigated uh, and where matters uh, need to be dealt with uh, in their favour, we will do just that. Perhaps I can uh, focus on the two uh, matters that were brought up uh, with regards to uh, fixed structures uh, and indeed the roads. First of all, Balsall Common Viaduct. Uh, I recognise my honourable friend's concern with the design of the Balsall Common Viaduct and the process that HS2 Limited has gone through uh, to develop it. Uh, as I said in my letter to my honourable friend, which he uh, referenced, um, I am keen to ensure that the process for engaging local communities in the design of the project's key design elements, such as this viaduct, is working well. I am aware that HS2 Limited has held a number of well-attended engagement events and briefings with local people and their representatives as the design has progressed over the year. Uh, whilst I am assured that HS2 Limited, or from HS2 Limited, I should say that the viaduct has been carefully designed to reflect its environmental um, context uh, and position, uh, I have also heard, and the House has heard from my honourable friend, that engagement feels like an explaining event rather than a listening event. I am keen, and indeed keen to put it on the record, that good community ideas and suggestions must be heard and must be worked upon. That is not only good to ensure that the community receives the legacy that they want, it is also polite. It is, of course, important to note that the options considered as part of the design process are constrained by certain factors such as the structural performance requirements of a high-speed railway. I note that my honourable friend has made unfavourable comparisons with the design of another HS2 viaduct further south in the Colne Valley, which I I visited uh, some weeks back. HS2 Limited stressed that this is a very different type of structure in a very different context. However, like me, HS2 Limited will have heard my honourable friend's call that the viaduct must fit in with the local area and character. I note that the Schedule 17 application for the design of the Balsall Common Viaduct was submitted in January and, it, and that the decision currently rests with Solihull Metropolitan Borough Council and I will await their decision with interest, as I know will my honourable friend. Can I turn next to the matters raised on Waste Lane and Kelsey Lane and the appeals? I would also like to note my honourable friend's concerns uh, about the use of lorry routes in Balsall Common. The inspector has made a recommendation to ministers on this appeal, and the issue is now being considered by ministers in my department and in the Department for Levelling Up Housing and Communities. We do anticipate a decision in the coming weeks, and whilst in the meantime my honourable friend will understand that it would not be appropriate for me to comment on the case, all I can say is the House has heard his views 
on the appropriateness of Waste Lane and Kelsey Lane. Turning to general community engagement concerns, which may also take into account uh, matters referenced by my right hon. Friend, the Member for Stone, the Department takes the monitoring of HS2 construction seriously. HS2 Limited and its contractors are held to account by the Independent Construction Commissioner, the HS2 Residence Commissioner and the Department for Transport's team of independent construction, construction inspectors. I met the HS2 Construction Commissioner in February, and indeed I met the uh, Residence Commissioner uh, before that, to discuss current issues affecting communities and to better understand how HS2 Limited and its contractors are responding to these challenges. Regular reporting is just one of the ways in which we monitor and proactively assure not just the cost and efficiency of the project, but how HS2 is being delivered. HS2 Limited and its contractors are rightly required to comply with exacting environmental requirements, including a comprehensive code of construction practice, which specifies measures to minimise the full range of impacts that any construction project has on affected people and communities, as well as all the undertakings, assurances and environmental commitments contained in the HS2 Acts. Effective communi communication with affected parties is also crucial, and I thank both my honourable friend and my right honourable friend for giving examples of where we don't always get it right, but we need to. I am committed to making sure issues are resolved as quickly as possible and to ensuring that lessons are learned for the future. Uh, my right honourable friend, the member for Stone, delivered a litany of concerns on behalf of his constituents. Uh, he's asked for a rocket to be uh, delivered. Um, I'm not sure I'll be arriving in a rocket to his uh, constituency, but I will come. Uh, he has asked for me to see whether these matters can be rectified. I know, working in partnership with him, that we've got every chance of doing a better job uh, if he feels that job is not being done at the moment. I look forward to coming to visit him and his constituents. To conclude, Madam Deputy Speaker, I will continue to work as Rail Minister with honourable uh, members and right honourable members and others in the community on making sure we get the delivery of infrastructure projects right. I want HS2 to be an example to other transport projects, not just in what it delivers, but in the way it is delivered. And to do so, I recognise that means making improvements, learning from experience, and changing the way we operate in order to become better. And I'm committed that HS2 Limited will do that. Limiting construction impacts in the first place should be a primary concern for all working on HS2, but so should treating people and places with the respect that they deserved and ensuring that any impacts uh, are mitigated and are avoided where not required. I thank my hon. Friend and my right hon. Friend again for this debate, and it is vital that we continue to discuss our transport projects openly and transparently, and that all hon. and right hon. members use this chamber to press me to ensure that their constituents are represented, and that has happened here today.